Hello everyone and welcome to the back room. I wanted to make a follow on to my earlier video about running CPM on the Indus GT. I ended that video by booting the system but I didn't show it running any applications and uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, transferring CPM applications to the Indus is not easy. I tried using an SIO to USB as a second drive, but I kept getting BDOS errors. I also tried an old SIO to PC serial cable uh, using a MAX 232, as well as several PL2303 cables, and basically nothing would work. It became clear that I'd have to hook up a second drive. Indus CPM does support a second drive, but it seems it prefers the real thing. So I got out my XF551 and hooked it up, imagining I'd be running WordStar and Pascal MT Plus within minutes, except, well, you guessed it, the drive wasn't working. No response from the power switch. I tried several power supplies, but nothing. So it was time to open up, have a look and find out what was wrong. Stripping the XF is easy. There are four screws underneath which separate the case halves. Four screws hold the drive rails down and four screws hold the circuit board. Remove all of these and the drive is in pieces. Once inside, it was obvious someone had been here before me. Uh, the metal shield over the mech had silver paint daubed over what had obviously been rusty areas. And one of the screws was missing from the circuit board. The XF551 board is well known for being very cheaply made and common faults include cracked and dry solder joints at the SIO ports, the power connector, the switch and the drive select switches. Flipping the board over it was clear someone had already resoldered the power connector and switch but I couldn't see any other evidence of rework. So I reflowed the solder here and on the SIO ports and did my best to clean up with some isopropanol. Take great care when soldering the board because it's super easy to lift the traces and damage them. Don't have your iron too hot and don't hold it in place for too long. I was really very gentle cleaning the board which meant it wasn't quite as clean as I would have preferred but I was very aware of those delicate traces. I 
I reunited the mech with a circuit board, added power and switched on. When you switch on, all you'll see is a momentary flash from the green LED at the front and the head will move very slightly and then reset. I could hear the head moving, so now I had power. Okay, job done. I rebuilt the drive, connected up a 130XC and tried to boot DOS 2.5. At first all I got was boot errors scrolling up the screen. By the way, you can't hear the familiar Atari SIO beeping because the computer is connected to my 9 inch monitor and that has no sound capability. I kept trying, resetting, rebooting, and occasionally the disk would boot, but it was not consistent. And of course I did try other disks with other DOSs and same result. However, as the drive warmed up, it gradually did become more consistent and eventually I was even able to boot Flight Simulator. But overall it still felt flaky and not quite right. I had another look at the circuit board, searching for broken traces, leaking capacitors and so on, and I put my meter across all the chips to make sure they were all getting power, but nothing obvious came to light. So next I was going to have to break out the oscilloscope and scope the chips and have a look at the signals. But before I did that, I decided to swap out the mech and see if that made a difference. I liberated a switchable 4080 track Cumana drive intended for the BBC computers from my store and connected it up and well same inconclusive result. It would work for a time and then I'd get boot errors and then it would work again. I did a quick search online to see if anyone had had similar problems and I found a number of discussions about firmware upgrades that suggested the ROM in my drive should be replaced. Also a number of XF owners having problems with their drives had resolved them simply by swapping out the ROM. Apparently my firmware is version 7.6 and an upgrade to 7.7 .7 or Stephen Dorndorf's Hyper XF would be better. Both are available to download from various sources. I'd already cleaned and reseated the ROM chip, so now I burned a 2764 EEPROM with a copy of 7.7 and installed it, and from that moment the drive worked flawlessly. So now all that remained was to clean off the worst of the corrosion, reassemble the drive and I was all set to start moving CPM applications to the Indus GT.
to find out whether I had any success in transferring CPM applications from the XF551 to the Indus GT, look out for an upcoming video where I take a closer look at two of the three CPM systems for the Atari 8-bits. Thanks for watching everyone, see you next time.